Welcome back to Therapy Thursdays. Today we're going to take a look at or discuss a recent paper that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine that looked at a comparison between arthroscopic knee surgery and physical therapy for patients with osteoarthritis and meniscal tear, specifically patients over the age of 45. Take a look at the, the link below for the full article details. But in general, there was no differences found after six months of treatment from physical therapy alone or arthroscopic knee surgery plus physical therapy. So at very least, if you are one of these patients with osteoarthritis and a meniscal tear, probably diagnosed by an MRI, you should definitely be giving a solid plan of management of physical therapy a try first. So we're going to look at, uh, we're going to split up this uh, Therapy Thursday into three phases based on the three phase program that was proposed in the paper itself and talk about some key features that we look at in rehabbing a patient like this. Now any good rehab program is going to be completely tailored to the individual itself so don't take this as you should do these exercises. We're just going to talk about some generics of things that we would look for in each of these phases. So phase one for rehab program for a person with osteoarthritis and meniscal tear will look at achieving full active and passive pain-free range of motion. So essentially the knee joint is a simple hinge joint. Flexion and extension is the range that we're looking at. We're going to direct our attention to full terminal knee extension, achieving this full lockout position in the knee. If a patient's not able to do that in a standing weight-bearing position on their own, we can look at is using gravity to unload the knee and do some quad sets with overpressure. So essentially we just have two chairs set up. I'm using my quads to fully extend the knee and if I need to put some overpressure on the knee itself to achieve that full lockout position. So again we're trying to achieve full knee extension pain free both actively and passively and you can always compare side to side if you're worried about not having the ability to achieve that end range lockout. So if a patient is able to fully extend the knee both actively and passively, and it's equal bilaterally on both sides, we'll then get into a resisted terminal knee extension exercise. Now the paper that we're discussing has this as a phase two exercise. We think this is a really uh, important early exercise to implement uh, to reinforce that end range terminal knee extension and get activation of the quads. So essentially we'll put tension on the band, fully uh, standing with both knees in extension, weights over your heels, let the knee unlock and fully extend. All the movement should be coming at the knees. You can put your hand over the quad to feel those muscles be the main drivers of this movement. Hold for three to five seconds at the end and you should feel all the activation happening in your distal quads. Again, this is a phase one exercise for us in our rehab program. Stick with us, we'll take a look at some of the things we look for in the second phase. Uh, we're templating the New, New England Journal of Medicine article, seen below.